Hey, what's up, my construction entrepreneurs? Want to talk to you about one of the first jobs I screwed up on. Okay, this is about eight years ago. Um, I landed a pretty big job doing uh, stamp concrete. Now, on this project here, it was uh, interesting. I was excited to do it. Um, it was a lot. It was one of the biggest jobs I ever done. And I really felt like I can do it, you know. Uh, took care of some other smaller jobs, ran several jobs. And mind you, at this time, I was still employed, okay. I was a, a supervisor for an underground pipeline company, right. And um, I sold, I landed this job, um, landed on the weekend and after work. And I had guys out there working while I was working my regular job, running work for someone else. And um, it started out with guys going out there, just really not taking it seriously, milking the job because I wasn't there. Um, they had clear instructions, gave them the plans. Uh, literally, it was just a layout to where I had the whole entire backyard for, filled with concrete almost. Uh, there was two um interests there's two exits that led out into the backyard one was sliding door and then the kitchen back door and both was on two different levels and it was like a six inch difference a step up between these two different areas and the design was supposed to be it was a little wavy around there and uh the border was supposed to be a um california edge right like a shiner right um and then the inside of that is a uh, stamp concrete with um with a, a, a like a brown so the brown was supposed to be on the california edge and then the inside was a california edge with a, a brown california edge, same color as the bands uh with a uh, white uh, release to it right it was supposed to stamp that well, I had trouble with the guys in the beginning. Wound up getting rid of that crew, getting another crew in there. Dirt was hard to move. I also did something with this uh, project here is that as you walked out there at the end of the patio, um, it was a spa that I actually set into the ground. So the spa was sticking up about a foot above the patio. So literally you can step into the spa instead of the spa sitting on top of the pad. So I set the spot into the ground, built a block wall there. I put drains below it uh, in case it ever overflowed. It it, it, it uh, drained the water out uh, and um, it worked out pretty good. It was an open end. It was just more like a C shape. And um, I thought it was a really good idea and they, they loved the idea and it, it, it it was, it was turning out to be a pretty good project until the day we stamped the concrete. And that day was going good. Um, one of the mistakes I made is that I poured the bands the same time as I poured the inner part of the concrete. I only do that now when I have experienced guys. If I don't have experienced guys, I'll pour bands separate and then pour the, the, the main part of the concrete. Well, this time, my guys convinced me, hey, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. So we did it. And um, 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 I didn't notice the errors in the concrete, the defects in the concrete we created until I was able to sweep off the, um, the release from there. Because once you sweep off the release, then you got to pressure wash it, right? You got to be careful when you pressure wash it too, right? So uh, I had one of my guys there and I had him sweep the whole thing. I was like, hey, I'm bringing a pressure washer. Just tell the uh, homeowners I'll be there. They came home, uh, one, she stayed, she was a stay at home, like type baker type person. The other guy, he worked uh, at a, a pretty big company by LAX. So he came home and I started pressure washing and they were right there. They were like, oh my gosh, Tyrone, this, 
is beautiful. This is exactly what we want. Now we went outside the house, the concrete went all the way to the back part of the house, what we call the entertainment area. And then it went on side the other house to the other side gate, right? Well, on side the house, all that was perfect. It was beautiful, the right color they wanted. It was, it was good. Uh oh, when I got into the entertainment areas, when I started to see, oh my gosh, we hit the stamps too hard in this area, create a bird bath. And then the worst thing is that I noticed that whoever did the stairs, we hit the face of the stairs with a stamp too hard, right? And we, to be honest with you, you shouldn't even have to even stamp the face of the stairs. Like, you're fine, you know? Or use a roller, use the roller um, stamp, you know? But uh, someone stamped the stamp. I don't even remember seeing it. I was out there on the slab stamping. You know, when you're doing stamping, you got powder everywhere. You know, you got your face covered, you know? Um, and then people are spread out trying to take care of different areas while you guys meet up, you know? I didn't notice it we did that there were some other areas on the other side that just came out nasty so they came out uh as i started moving the entertainment area and my heart was just like, oh my gosh man i have screwed up their job and to me at that time it wasn't bad it was, i was like oh it's not that bad because it was just a few areas. But when someone puts their, 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 the money that they have worked hard for into a project and they want a certain outcome, then um, you know anything is, is bad for them, right? Anything is bad for them. So it, um, it, it turned out pretty nasty to where they asked me, hey, so what are you gonna do to, to fix this? And I was like, hey, man, I'll just do uh, an overlay over it, get it the same color, same texture, everything. I'll just do an overlay over it. Well, at that time, because I, I screwed up, now I became incompetent to the customer. And now the customer went to their friend that was a landscaper in some other state and asked them about this overlay option I was offering them. And I think it was going to cost me seven grand. And I had about 5000 of profit in the job. Right. So I was like, man, I'm losing on this job like every day. So they came to me and the guy that they spoke to uh, was like, nope. You know, and back then overlays were still kind of new. A lot of them were popping up. Right. Depending on when you install them, the cold weather, uh, the bonding uh, materials weren't as good as they are now. Um, so they were leery on me doing that. So they said, hey, just try to repair it. And I regretted that. Uh, I was like, okay, so I'm trying to repair it. Oh my gosh, I tried everything. Trying to match a, a concrete color like that. And it, it, a truck delivered with anti antique release on there, a color concrete mix is impossible to match. And it's impossible not only to fill in, but to match the fill in with everything else around it and not make it look like an eyesore. I called in a color expert from Northern California. I spent money trying to get this thing right. And I just couldn't get it right. So uh, eventually I spent about seven grand um, trying to fix this thing, trying every day, going there every day, every day. Uh, after work, weekends, just trying to make this thing right, man. I had the wife crying to me how much I screwed up her 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 her, um, her backyard, and it was a dream of hers, and I just ruined everything. And my gosh, that was hurtful. But I kept showing up. I didn't give up on them. And then um, one day, I just told him like. John, I, I cannot do anything else, man. I haven't gotten anywhere. I'm, I spent nine grand trying to get this thing right, man, and I can't. He was like, all right, well, give me another solution. Let me know what you want to do. So I basically told him, you know, and everything was in the email by then. Everything was signatures by then, right? Because I just wanted to keep it legit and, and just have everything right. And um, 
So I suggested to him that um, I, when I tell him, I told him um, that uh, uh, I had no other way to, to do it that uh, because I suggested the overlay, you know, which was going to be seven grand that I only have only put, I put in nine grand already. So I'm over the seven grand by two grand. Right. I was like, man, um, allow me to seal it. Right. And then we can talk about afterward. He was like, okay, so I'm allowing you to seal it. And would that bring back the color like we had over there on side the house? And I was like, listen, John, it would enhance the color. So that's what the seal does. It enhance it. And I wet it and showed them how it would look. And I was like, it won't be exactly like this, but the seal is similar to wet in the concrete. Um, so he, I, so I sent him a letter for him to sign, basically saying that I, I'm going to seal it. I'm going to move past this. We're going to move to the next step after that. We're not going back. And um, he signed it, and I sent some guys out there and sealed it. The dude came home and flipped out. He was like, what the f- is going on here, Tyrone? What is this? And I was like, John, I sealed the job. That's all I did, buddy. Don't buddy me. You are you you ruin our lives and you did this and that's not right. And you told me the color was gonna change when you sealed it. I was like, John, there's no way I told you the color was gonna change. I said it was gonna enhance it. I was like, I'm sorry if I led you to believe that the color was gonna change, uh, you know, drastically change, you know. He was pissed, so he was like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm done with you. I'm done with everything. Give me this. Give me my money that you was going to give me so we could be done with this, right? By now, I'm already like, man, 10, 11 grand into this job, right? Like total, I'm spending on this, right? So I already had five grand into it. So now I'm six grand over. I'm like, John. Okay, man, this is my numbers. This is where I'm at with this. I'll go ahead and offer you five grand on this, John, so you can use that. But I was like, John, that's all I got, man. He was like, you know what, Tyrone? Taking it, man. And I gave it to him. And <clears throat> that job went away. And I always told myself I was going to go back and take care of that job. I know they'll probably never let me set foot on their, their property. But uh, one day I'm going to go back and and hopefully I can, you know, give them something of value to uh, fill that void, you know, that I took away from them. But, you know, a few things I learned on this is how to deal with customers and don't run away from it, you know, accept the phone calls, you know, face the music. If you made a mistake, face, fess up to it, you know, be straight up with the customers. Let them know, hey, man, this cannot be done. We have to do this. Or I have to pay you to to and make this thing go away as quick as possible because I was there every day. It was it was like the wife was reliving this whole thing, you know. Instead of me just putting my foot down and say, "Hey, you know what? We're doing overlay. I cover you full warranty. If it pops up, I I will take care of it." But that way they can keep, continue on with their life, and then it it'll go away fast for her, for them and myself instead of me going out there trying to spend money spending my wheels now i know how to deal with these issues quick fast speed is is is, is key in communication so you have to remember that communication speed and make the problem go away as quick as possible stop trying to find those endless solutions because you want to be nice, because you want to try to figure it out, because you, there's a possibility you can make it work. Sit down, talk to some people, call, and you would know whether if you can, you have the possibility to make it work. And if not, then you need to take care of those things. Something that's quick, uh, a solution that's going to be right for it, and 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 and, and give them full warranty for it. And be clear in the communication. Be clear in the communication. That's it. You know, my construction entrepreneurs share their very intimate story with you. Never put it out there before. I screwed up. Everyone's going to screw up. Own up to it. Make it right. And that way so you can move on to your next project. 
and don't let these things stump you. Remember, as a construction entrepreneur, you're going to have many things getting to your path as obstacles and, and structures. And don't allow, a lot of times we get into these little things and it screws us up. And for you know, we're not bidding on work anymore. We're not trying to uh, uh, gain more work. We're not doing estimates. We're not doing anything that works on our business because of that one little issue over there. So if you got that one little issue, don't allow that thing to stop you from doing business. Continue to move. Continue to move. By my construction entrepreneurs, I'm gonna let you go with that. Remember, hustle hard, then hustle harder.